Hey there, my friends, and welcome to the full moon lunar eclipse episode of Tarot for the Soul. My name is Carrie, and if you're new here, this is a weekly energy update and activation for the collective. As always, we're going to start by taking a look at the astrological highlights happening this week. I'm going to be sharing some channeled insights and messages, and we're going to be looking into some additional sacred wisdom teachings that are coming through the cards. Today, I'm going to be working with the wisdom of astrology. Avalon Oracle cards. I felt guided to work with this deck today in alignment with the energies of this full moon lunar eclipse happening in the sign of Sagittarius. The moon is in Sagittarius. The sun is in Gemini. Before we get into the details of this particular lunar eclipse, I'm just going to talk a little bit about eclipses in general. So eclipses in general whether it's a solar eclipse or a lunar eclipse, serve to break the usual pattern of energies that we find ourselves operating in in life. When it's a lunar eclipse, the light of the moon is momentarily darkened. And when it's a solar eclipse, the light of the sun is momentarily obscured. Now, many astrologers say that this momentary obscuring of light that happens when we have eclipses for the sun or the moon serve to bring us into being exposed to cosmic energies that we are not typically connected to. It does disrupt the usual patterns of energies in our life and serves to bring to the light of conscious awareness that which has been hidden or obscured or hanging out in the shadows of our subconscious mind. So this particular lunar eclipse is very aligned with the energies happening around the moon's south node. That means that this lunar eclipse is more geared towards clearing, releasing, letting go, surrendering, eliminating energies from our lives. Now, blending this with the fact that we have Jupiter in Pisces, which is another strong influence behind this particular lunar eclipse, that which we are being compelled to release, let go, surrender, is only creating space for what is a new energy, a new vibration, a new vision, a new dream, which is connected to the Jupiter and Pisces energy that we can embrace in moving forward. This lunar eclipse, even though it's a full moon, the energy around it feels more like a new moon type of energy in the way that we all might be feeling a little bit of a feeling of a lull, like we're being called to quiet down, to go within, to tend to our self-care. This is connected to us being right now in a little window of gestation period where we're experiencing a shift of energy, shifting away from what we're clearing, releasing in preparation for what we're sort of recalibrating towards and the fresh energies that will be making themselves known and playing themselves out over the course of the next six months. So the other thing that I want to say is with this clearing, letting go, the energies that are around this lunar eclipse are going to be supporting us in clearing and letting go things that would have been on our radar that we're, we've been aware of for a long time. And so there's just this knowing that now is the time. Now's the time to bring this long standing issue to completion. This is going to be like deeper experiences that are very connected to like the bigger picture pattern of our soul journey in moving forward. For instance, I'm going to go ahead and share how this is playing out in my life. I'm like right in this with you guys, right? So a good way that you can gain some insight as to how this lunar eclipse is going to exactly impact you is to look to see where you have the Sagittarius Gemini axis in your chart, your natal chart. So for me, I have Sagittarius in Venus in the eighth house and my part of fortune is in Gemini in the second house. So 
Eighth house represents transformation, birth, death, regeneration. Second house is possession. For me, unfortunately, the way this has manifested in my life is that my dog passed away yesterday. My fur baby that I've had for 15 years, um, I've had her since she was a puppy. She was almost 16 years old. Yesterday was her time to go. I'm sad, but I'm in peace with it. It was definitely her time. She was withering away gradually of old age and she just kind of took a turn for the worse yesterday. And this happened exactly 12 hours before the exact lunar eclipse. And so this is how it played out in my life. I literally had a death, which is related to the eighth house. And I didn't look at my dog as being a possession, but I was her owner. So, you know, look at your chart if you have it. If you don't have your chart, you can easily look it up if you have your exact birth information, your birth date, your birth time, and the location you were born. You can look up your natal chart for free on astro.com and take a look to see where you have that Sagittarius Gemini axis, and that's gonna give you some insight as to how you can personally best utilize the energy of this eclipse. Having said that, on the collective level, we're all experiencing this energy of this eclipse influencing us in ways where we're being compelled to release, clear away, let go, surrender in preparation for saying yes to the new dream. This is a really pivotal point for us all collectively. So in the spirit of that, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at three of these oracle cards. Again, the uh, Wisdom of Avalon oracle cards. The first card that I'm gonna be taking a look at is going to reveal messages, insights around uh, what's being released, okay? And so let me just give these a few shuffles here. And so we're gonna take a look at what messages are coming up around what's being released. And here we go. The card that's coming up is joy. So this is what it looks like. And so it's assigned to the number 37, which is a 10 in numerology, which is a one. So right away, we're seeing where we have a confirmation about we're all sort of in this juncture where we're bringing one cycle of experience in our life to completion and a new cycle opening up. But with this joy energy on one level, it says there's cause for celebration. Let's take my example. I'm sad that my dog passed away. I love her, I miss her, but I also know that it was her time and I know that she feels free and happy so I can be joyful about that. I can celebrate her life rather than mourning her death. I can be happy that she's free and liberated and I can find a glimmer of happiness in the new path that I'm gonna be on now at this time in my life. Um, since she has transitioned. So we all need to find joy around our personal transformations. However you're experiencing the transitions that are happening with this lunar eclipse, where's the joy in it? Where's the cause for celebration? Where's the energy of exciting anticipation and knowing that there's brighter sunny skies and positive experiences around the corner? This card also reminds us of the power of being joy, of emulating joy in life, being a source of joy and emulating it out, bringing joy to your life, sharing it with others in ways that are going to amplify the energy of joy, exuberance, expansion vibrationally within the collective. So the next card that I'm going to look at is telling us the best way to work with these transitional energies that are happening right now. And it's so interesting that the card that's coming up is called the mystery, the mystery of life, the sacred mystery. It is assigned to the number 52, which is a seven. In numerology, sevens are assigned to mysterious forces in life. It's anything magical, mystical, occult, esoteric, spiritual is assigned to the number seven. And so obviously perfect number for the mystery card. And this reminds us to dive into the 
great mystery. Embrace the unknown. And that's why it's important for us to take this next few days to kind of quiet down and go within. This is us reaching into connecting with the sacred mystery in life. This is the realm of energy where everything resides in a state of potential, where anything is possible, anything can happen. And so we need to allow ourselves to be in that space of aligning with the great mystery, the sacred mystery. Of course, yes, have our intentions in mind around what we're intending to align with, but allow the great mystery, the spiritual forces in life that we don't have control over, allow those energies to inspire our awarenesses now, allow those energies to transmit into your being, mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, awarenesses that lead to clarity, insight, and guidance in moving forward. Now we are getting ready to have Mercury retrograde. So I would say that over the course of the next month, the energy is more about reviewing, reprioritizing, remembering, restructuring. It's a time of gathering information and gathering inspiration in preparation for moving forward, which is gonna be most suited for when Mercury goes direct again in about another month from now. And then the last card that we're looking at today is representing what is the energy that's collectively being activated right now. And it is so interesting, the spider card, it's coming up reversed in the reading, which I'll talk about in a moment, but this is the energy, this is the card the spider card, and it's represented by number 15, which is a six. In numerology, six is the number of love, balance, harmony, and it's also associated with domestic life. The spider energy is creative energy. We're all being guided to create, to allow higher vibrational energies from your higher self, from higher guidance, to channel through you and be what's inspiring, what you're contributing, what you're creating, what you're expressing, and what you're bringing to life. In the reverse position, the spider card is saying, but we have to take time to connect with, within ourselves first. What am I truly feeling creatively inspired by? What am I truly feeling creatively inspired about? What do I feel called to cultivate in the realm of my own unique expression of creative soul gifts? So as this is showing up as the energy that's being activated, it's all about higher vibrational creative manifestations of your soul essence and expression. So all of us that are individually bringing that to the collective, and when we do that, we are in fact co-creating a web of higher vibrational timeline, higher vibrational reality that we can all share, contribute to, and utilize in ways that ground us all collectively in higher vibrational, healthier modalities and ways of living and being. So take some time, especially over the next few days of this week, to quiet down, go within, connect with the sacred mystery, know what your intentions are, but allow yourself to be guided by divine intelligence. Okay, guys, much love, blessings, namaste. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you, and stay tuned. There's more videos right around the corner. Blessings.